Thanks for joining me today as we continue on with our black and white cards. And today I'm going to make a trifold card and we're going to put some black and white butterflies on there. We actually made the butterflies in part one and then I chose not to use them. And then as I went to bed that night, I had an epiphany of what I wanted to use them for. So here we have part two as a result. So I'm just using a bone folder and I very casually measured that. And then these are the three butterflies that we created in part one. And so those will go along the center line. And then you can see whenever I tap my fingers, I'm thinking. So I'm trying to decide how I want to do that and if I want to use something else. But I go back to those three butterflies because that's what I had in my epiphany. I just am trying to figure out what I want on either side. So I opt for a piece of black cardstock and I'm going to make each side one color or I don't know if it's lack of color. Anyway, one side will be white and one side will be black and then we'll coordinate the butterflies along with it. So I'm just using a pink pen and going to trim down this black piece. As you all know, I don't do a lot of measuring. So if I can just draw a line with a pen or a pencil, that makes me happy. And then I decided to put this actually on the left hand side because when I did fold that in half, the right was wider than the left. So this will help. And I'm using my Ranger Multimedia Matte Finish Glue which I love, especially for something like this, where it gives me just a couple of seconds to readjust to make sure it's perfectly aligned and it has a matte finish when it dries. So it's a really nice type of glue. So now I've decided we're gonna cut these butterflies in half. However, first I'm gonna use the sticky mat and I'm going to use a marker to make half of it black and keep the other half white. And I'm just using a ruler to make that distinct line. And these sticky mats are nice. I've used them before. They clean off really easy. I do make sure that I keep the clear cover on when I'm not using it, but it does keep your item in place when you're doing something like this with marker or with an ink pad or dauber, anything. It just keeps it where you want it. And then the grid lines also help. If you didn't want to do this with a marker, you could create two of these butterflies and then cut each in half. That is the other option that I was showing you there, but I went for the easiest route, <laughs> which I typically will do, and that is just using a black marker. And this is just a plain black marker. You could use a permanent black marker, whatever works well for you. This seemed to work just fine in this in this area. It is nice because these pieces kind of stand out from one another to do the outer edges and that just gives it even a little bit more of that black and white distinction. And so you'll see, I'm going to cut out a little bit of this, but I'm showing you that I'm doing that with each of the butterflies. So we'll have a small, a medium, and a large butterfly. And I think that will be really pretty on that card front. And that was the epiphany I had when I went to bed that night. So I'm excited to show you what this is gonna look like. So this is the last one, the smallest of the three butterflies. And you can see where that ink got onto the sticky pad. That comes off super easy. You can spray it with some water and wipe it off. You could even use a little bit of, this is that clear top that I was telling you about, but you can also use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and water as well if you can't get that ink off. Okay, so here I have the pieces in place and then I have the butterflies as well. And I was trying to decide if I was going to keep the butterflies whole and use them as kind of an opening piece, but I decided to cut them in half. And luckily I did color the correct sides. <laughs> that is the one thing about this type of card is you gotta make sure you color the right side black and the, leave the correct side white as well. Makes it a lot easier when you have cards. I guess I could flip, could have flipped the card upside down since there's nothing on the inside yet. But here I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna wanna do with these butterflies. And aren't they pretty how they, they're like three pieces, but when they cut out of the die, it's all one piece, which is nice. So you aren't trying to push out a whole bunch of different pieces and they just kind of separate and they're attached all at the center. So I'm just putting glue around the outer part of the butterfly and that will be the part that will glue down. And then I'll keep the other pieces without glue so that I can push them up and give them a little bit of dimension. And I just kind of bend those so you can get that little bit of dimension there. And I decided to go small, medium, large, and then we'll just glue all of these butterflies on. And there we go. And that actually even looks pretty just like that, but we definitely need to do our other side. And I'm just making sure I didn't glue down those other petals, the ones that stick out. And so I'm just popping those out to make sure that 
they didn't get inadvertently glued. And now I'm going to do the same with the white. I think that looks stunning, doesn't it? Nothing th same thing, I'm just gonna pop those up so I make sure they don't get inadvertently glued down. And then I'll attach the other two as well. And I cut a little bit of that out so that you didn't have to see it all. And there we go. And I love all of that dimension. These butterflies are absolutely gorgeous. If I can find where I purchased them, I will definitely link them in the description box below. I try and always put as many of the products that I've used in the description box just to give you some help. I am not monetized by anyone at the time of this video, so just for your ease. And here I've decided I'm gonna die cut out some very small butterflies because there's a lot of black and white space on that card. Where there's space, I typically like to fill it up. Uh, not to make it too terribly busy, but you know, it's a little bit plain right now. I also wanna put a sentiment and I have this vertical sentiment that I think will work really well here. So I'm gonna cut that out of black cardstock since I'm gonna put it on the right side, which is white. And I'm actually going to cut this out multiple times and I'm going to stack them on top of each other. And that just gives that a lot more definition. This is a very skinny sentiment. And so it's not like I can pop it up with a lot of foam tape. So the next best thing is to just cut out a bunch of them, pop them on top of each other with some glue, and then they have more dimension just in that way. So here you can see, I'm just going to separate them all out first, put all the birthdays together. And I only did three, you can do six if you want it to really pop up. I just really just wanted a little bit more definition, not a ton, and so this will be perfect. And I'm using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue because that has the most pre precise tip of all of my glues, and I just love this glue. It dries really fast, so I'm working kind of quickly, and then we'll put the next layer on, and it's just a really much thicker sentiment than it would have been before, and then I did the same thing with the Happy. I cut a lot of that out as well, as you get the idea, and they're super easy to glue together. Make sure they're just all lined up, and then we have our sentiment. And then I'm gonna pop out these black butterflies, and I've already popped out the white butterflies earlier, and we're gonna find a spot for them. I do think that these may be part of the same set, but I am not 100% sure of that, but I will double check before I put it in the description box. These don't have the same kind of definition. They don't have the three layers. They're just one dimension, but I think they're super pretty. I almost forgot about the sentiment for a second, which is good. <laughs> I remembered before I glued on the butterflies. So we'll put the sentiment down just so that I keep track of where that's going before I put down these butterflies, but I think it's going to be really pretty. And I, I do appreciate this vertical happy birthday. Most of the time you have room for a bigger sentiment, but when you have these trifold cards, sometimes it's really hard to get a bigger dimension unless you're going to put something right in the center and help that be the panel to lift it up with, or the handle of the card, I guess. <laughs> this vertical sentiment actually worked out really, really nicely. And you guys know I'm always looking for a birthday card, so this is another happy birthday. I think both of them today are happy birthday cards. I've got plenty of thank you cards right now and some thinking of you cards, but happy birthday is my go-to that I go for most of the time. All right, and I found a place for each of my butterflies, and I think they're gonna look really pretty there and fill up some of the empty spaces that we had. I also considered putting some washi tape around the edges of it or even put it down the center before I put the butterflies on. So I had a few ideas floating in my head, but I actually think these butterflies came out perfectly. And we'll just glue them down. And I glued down mostly the center so that there could be a little bit of movement on those butterflies sticking up just a little bit those the butterfly wings and then I'm going to put down the other butterflies. I cut out three of each. I should say one of each but in black and in white and there was three butterflies total of those small ones and it was almost like it was made to to be like that so I think that came out really pretty. Then I decided I always love to put gem embellishments on the inside of the butterflies kind of where the original body of the butterfly was. I love a little bit of bling in any card so <laughs> If I can add it, I will. So these are black gem embellishments and I'm putting those just on the left side there. And I put a little bit of glue because I never can trust the adhesive on the back of gem embellishments. And there's nothing worse than losing a gem embellishment especially when they all have the same number. So I'm going to put these black ones on the left hand side and then on the right hand side I was going to put these pearls but I did end up changing my mind and I just went with clear gems. So they'd kind of match the ones that were next to it. Those pearl ones were much smaller, and so it would would have been significantly different. So these clear ones actually are gonna come out and look perfect. 
And there we go. I love that little bit of bling. On to the next card. I was hoping I could use a piece of scrap, but I couldn't. So we'll take out a plain piece of black paper. And this is actually scrap as well. I had heard it at the bottom of it. And hopefully we won't see that when I emboss this. But I emboss, I'm embossing these flowers onto black cardstock. And my hope is to cut out one of those pieces. And we'll just kind of pop one up in this white. So I'm just going to use enough to cut out one. And so I'll die cut that out, or I'm sorry, emboss that one in my die cutting and embossing machine. And then I'm going to use this sticky mat again, and we're going to put some ink on these. So I'm using my Hero Hues Unicorn White Pigment ink pad, and I'm just going to swipe on extremely lightly some ink. And the reason why I do this first is because I like there to be some darker colors and then I'm using a finger dauber and I'm just going to then put a little bit more ink and it becomes just a little bit more muted when you're using the daubers or any other kind of applicator other than swiping it right on. So it's going to give it a lot more depth and dimension. I like the way that this looked. So I'm just trying to get to the leaves and the petals. I don't want any color on the background. I'm doing a black and white card demonstration right now, but you could always use color here if you wanted to. You could use Distress Oxides. You could use any color you wanted on here. You could put different colors on the petals, but I just wanted to make this a black and white card. So that's why I'm using white here against the background. Feel free to use whatever you'd like. And I'm using pigment inks, but you can certainly use other types of inks as well. And then with the white one, I'm going to kind of do the opposite. And I'm using my VersaFine black ink pad, and I'm just putting some ink on here. It's again going to be a little bit muted. I didn't swipe any on there because I knew I'd be able to get enough. I'm going extremely lightly because I don't want this to get too dark because this is going to be the one I'm going to cut out. And so I'm going to want that to be nice and bright. So here I'm just going to cut off the edges that the embossing folder left behind. And you'll notice when I put information in my description box, I'm not usually putting the size of my cards, only because I will start with a size card and then I will cut them down to whatever size I want. And in this case, that's a five by seven card base. And you're going to see I'm just going to whack off <laughs> one side of it. And I just do that because I make my own envelopes. And so they can be any size I want them to be. So I never worry that they're going to be too big or too small for any envelopes that I might have because I do make the envelopes. All right, so I'm going to attach that to that white card base. And it's a little bit skinnier than a five by seven. And then I'm going to fussy cut out this one flower. And I don't want the leaves. I just want the petals. And then we'll pop this up so we even have more dimension on it. But sometimes I like a little focal piece. I had thought for a moment about doing all the flowers popped out like this, but sometimes it's just pretty to have that one focal point. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you have done more of them or is one enough? I'm so trying to match it up a little bit. And I'm going to pop this onto some foam tape and I'm cutting it kind of into diagonal so that I can get it right up to the tip of the petal so that I don't have any bending when it goes through the mail because I do mostly mail my cards. We'll make sure we get a lot of foam tape. I like foam tape to be on all the petals and then I usually put enough in the middle so we're not going to have any sag anywhere on our pretty flower. And there we go. Now as I'm starting to take these off, all of a sudden I'm like, hmm, I don't know if this is going to be enough. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, I either need to make more flowers or I can add some string. So I added some string because I think then we'll be able to tie in the sentiment. And I do pull it off of the card base and that is something that I really wanted to do just because when you tie string around, it's nice if you can go all the way around the card. Uh, if you just try and go around the edges, it just never seems to work out for me. So I wish I'd thought about it before I added the card front to the card base, but I didn't. So we'll just put it back on and then I'm going to put it onto some foam tape just so that I don't have any problem with that string being in the back. A little dimension never hurt anything anyway, but here you can see I just pop that up a little bit and then now I will take the foam tape off of that flower and match it up. And I just think that finishes it off a little bit nicer with that string. And then once I add a sentiment, you'll see 
it'll pull it all together even more. So here I pulled out a white gel pen and I will include these in the description box as well. And I'm just trying to give it a little bit more interest. Those kind of came out very gray when I added that white ink onto it. And so I'm just trying to make sure they look very white. And so I put some little dots on the centers of the flowers and then just where there was little stripes in the petals, I just added it with the white pen. So not a lot, just a little bit here and there just to give it a just a little bit more of interest. It actually looks like they have a little bit more dimension as well. So it's not so like gray and then it's definitely looking more white that way. So then if you watched my tips and tricks video from a while back, you saw me cut these all out or at least pull them all out and I put them on to press and seal and that helps me keep them organized and then I can pull out whatever I want to use. I was trying to use some of these sentiment pieces but they're just a little bit big. I didn't want to completely cover up the string so then I went to the other ones that I have and these I just used removable tape to tape them onto this page and I'm going to try a couple of these to see which ones I might like. That one seems a little bit small to me. It's going to get kind of lost in the shuffle so I'm going to go with one size bigger. These came pre-cut out for me and I will link that video here so that you can see what that looks like if you have any questions about those sentiment strips. And here I'm just gonna put it, some glue and I'm gonna glue it actually to the string. I think that came out really pretty. I'm gonna pull out this other card. So these are my two cards. I do need to put a sentiment on the inside there and I will do that for both of these. I like to put like sayings and stuff in there. So here's just a closer look, different camera angle so that you can see some of the shine from those embellishments and that 3D from those butterfly leaves. I think that card is just darling. And then all that to mention with that happy birthday that we popped up on in triplicate. And then this one is really pretty too. It's a lot more elegant. It has a lot of fun going on with that as well. So I like that one too. So I hope you enjoyed this today. If you would, please hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Also, you can subscribe to my channel. I do put out two videos per week. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified every time I do put out new content. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for joining today.